Now, everyone has heard of the fabled Route 66. Once known as America's Highway, it was the way to travel from the Midwest to California in a pre-interstate America. It's all but gone now. A few bits and pieces of our past love of roadside attractions, mom and pop diners, and motor court lodging still remain. There was a magic to those old state highways when gas was cheap and the car was king. But sometimes the magic was of a dark, dangerous kind. One state highway in particular springs to mind. Not the aforementioned 66, but instead U.S. Route 666. It was often called the Devil's Highway mainly due to the biblical connotation of 666 being the number of the beast from the book of Revelation. This, and an unusually high fatality rate along this lonely stretch of asphalt, led many to believe the route was cursed, the New Mexico section in particular. Back in the late 1990s, a young man named John had an eventful, frightening experience on this portion of the highway. After attending his freshman year of college in Albuquerque, New Mexico, John decided to drive back to his parents' home in Utah during the summer break. Being a typical college student and short on cash, John had the idea just to drive straight through and save the money it would have cost to stop and spend the night at a motel along the way. John calculated the shortest route to his parents' home in Utah would involve a long stretch of U.S. Route 666. He'd been warned against driving through this area by his college roommate, Todd, who was a Native American from the Navajo tribe. Ugh, I'd try another route, Todd had said, studying John's map. There's some dark energy on those tribal lands. Bad magic. Things the elders forbid us to even speak of aloud. Now, John shrugged this off as merely superstitious beliefs and stuck with his plan. After the last day of classes, he took to the road, happily free for the summer. However, it was just past Gallup, New Mexico, where he took the turn onto U.S. Route 666 North that things began toward the bazaar. As he drove along with the radio keeping him company, it was just starting to get really dark. There, on the side of the road, something caught his eye, a hitchhiker. John slowed down to get a good look at the guy, briefly entertaining the idea of giving him a ride. Someone to talk to might not be a bad idea for this long drive through the middle of nowhere. John instantly thought better of the idea, though. There was something off about the hitchhiker. He looked kind of, well, hairy. Almost shaggy. Definitely in need of a haircut and a shave. Sorry, fella, not this time. After a few more miles, John had grown tired of the country music coming from the radio and poked randomly at the buttons. A booming voice filled the car. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. The fact that he was on Route 666 wasn't lost on John. He hit another button, silencing the creepy radio preacher. A few minutes later, he spotted something at the edge of the dark highway. Another hitchhiker. As he drove past, John did a double take. It was the same hitchhiker from before. Instantly realizing this was an impossibility, John sped up to get away from the shadowy figure. It nagged at him, though. It really had looked like the same guy. Same dirty clothes, same leering grin, although this time he looked even shaggier. With a little shudder, he tried the radio again. This time it was some paranormal call-in show. The topic? Skinwalkers. Not now, not tonight, not on this road, John thought, switching the channel. About 25 minutes later, John felt his stomach drop as he once again spotted a lone figure on the side of the road. No, he thought. It couldn't be. 
Yes, it was. It was the same scruffy hitchhiker. This time, the stranger crossed his arms and fixed John with a cold stare. Again, John floored the car as he watched the dark, hairy figure retreat in the rearview mirror. What in the world was going on? A half hour and 35 miles later, John had just begun to calm down. He'd halfway convinced himself he wasn't going crazy. Maybe he was just tired from finals. Or perhaps he was suffering from some sort of road hypnosis with the unchanging scenery out here and the flatness of the absolute middle of nowhere. Again, he tried the radio. This time, it was a news report about a family apparently having been mauled to death by a wolf in northern New Mexico. Really? He thought. Nothing but weird stuff on the radio tonight, he thought, switching it off once more. And there he was, the shaggy hitchhiker, again, looking somehow even shaggier and hairier. And what was going on with his ears? Were they pointy? The figure had appeared holding his thumb out, but in an instant had disappeared. John slowed the car, bewildered even further. Suddenly, the figure reappeared, now sitting hunched on a fence rail, grinning an evil grin. John saw a glint of sharp white teeth as he mashed the gas pedal to the floor. Unnerved completely at this point, John now nervously watched the clock as he sped along. Just as before, at about the same time and distance down the road, he felt his throat clench. In the distance, his headlights caught the outline of a dark figure perched on a fence post. Slowing the car down for a better look this time, John was shocked to see the man, even though he now more resembled a beast, make an agile leap from the fence post and begin running toward the car on all fours. As this creature neared the edge of the road, it suddenly leapt and sailed all the way over John's car hood. Instantly, its head appeared in the driver's window, a nightmare of glistening, dripping fangs and glowing eyes. John screamed and hit the gas, but was stunned to see the beast running after him not far behind. Up ahead, John was relieved to see a dwelling of some sort, the first one he'd seen for miles and miles. Skidding into the dirt driveway, he came to a stop and jumped out of the car and ran to the front door of what he could now see was an old trailer home. As he pounded on the door to be let in, it swung open beneath his fist. Making a split-second decision, he stepped inside and slammed the door. Whoever lived here would surely understand. That thing had been right behind him in the yard. As his eyes became accustomed to the darkness, John realized the trailer was abandoned. Outside, he could hear heavy breathing and snarling, seeming to be circling the derelict home. John whipped out his cell phone, intending to call the authorities, but then he thought better of it. A wild tale like this one would probably see him being taken in for a 72-hour psychiatric hold. Instead, he decided to call his roommate, Todd. Even though he had ignored his advice, maybe he'd know what to do. Todd listened intently as John relayed the tale of the ever-changing hitchhiker. He remained silent for a few beats after John finished his account. Skinwalker, Todd whispered into the phone. Whatever you do, do not let it in, even if it appears as human again. And don't go outside either. Well, no way am I going out there, John replied. The damn thing has been sitting on the roof of my car. Just stay put, man, Todd warned. It'll have to go home before daybreak. Then you'll be safe. At least until it gets dark again. John closed the flip phone and slumped to the floor. It was going to be a long, long night. The moral of John's encounter? Travel by day and sleep in a motel by night. But if you do manage to find yourself on a dark stretch of highway in the dead of night, keep this in mind. 
Some hitchhikers want more from you than just a ride.